Hey everybody, how you doing? It's Sean from RideSharing101.com Doing something a little different with the vlog. I am holding the phone. So woo, you can see it. I got my Muntry shirt on. Muntry is a, uh, a company that no longer exists. I used to work for them. Did some deliveries. And it pertains to today's daily vlog. Um, let's take care of a bit of business. If you like the video content that I provide, please subscribe to the channel. Please hit the uh, notification bell and feel free to leave a comment. Also feel free to join the Facebook group, Ride Sharing 101. And I totally have, have had hair, which I apologize for, but hey, I don't edit. So um, this is all live, one take, go for it. And um, today's vlog is a little different. This one is about, um, it relates to Travis Kalanick, the uh, the founder of Uber, and this story is about ghost kitchens. Um, and Travis is involved with this, and what it is is basically this is extra kitchen space that takes up um, space in a warehouse where restaurants can cook their overflow. And let me just adjust this one more time here. Um, and basically, let's say you went to a burger restaurant and there's a huge line out the door. And let's say, or let's actually, let's go with Chinese food because Chinese restaurants do a ton of takeout. Let's say the Chinese restaurant, quite popular, has a line out the door and they get a lot of to-go orders. Well, they might not have enough staff or enough space to accommodate all these to-go orders with their dine-in clientele. So they would have a ghost kitchen, which is a restaurant space in a warehouse that would pre prepare these to-go meals that would be delivered by, let's say, Grubhub or Uber Eats. Same food, same ingredients, just made off-site at a different location. And you wouldn't know where it's coming from. You just order and it would come from the ghost kitchen. You'd get the delivery and uh, you would never know that it wasn't the restaurant, you know, two blocks down the street. It might be the restaurant, you know, 15 blocks out of the way. And this is interesting for a couple of different reasons. Um, these ghost kitchens can occupy space and warehouse kind of like a food court. Uber Eats and Grubhub make their their money off the delivery charge. And um, it's actually a very fast growing um, component of the sort of Uber complex. You know, you've got the Uber rides, Uber Eats, there's Uber Freight, Uber has their scooters and all this, but the Uber Eats part or the Uber Eats portion is the one that makes the most money or the most profit or percentage wise, the, the profit's the best with this. And you can do a food court kind of um, way of doing business, but it's a food court not open to the public. For instance, you know, I don't know how many of you have children, but I've dated women with kids and you know, one might want pizza and the other one might want fried chicken. And you know, I've had battles with exes where I'm like, hey look, I don't care if we get pizza or chicken, but I'm not going to both. We're only going to one, we're gonna eat there and that's how we're gonna do it. Well, with this sort of ghost kitchen or dark kitchen um, way of doing business, you can kind of get whatever food you want. You could get Italian. You can get Japanese, you can get Mexican, you could get curry. You order from one company, they go to this ghost kitchen location, pick up the four different styles of food for you, deliver it to your house. Four different people, let's say you're watching the game on a Sunday, you're getting four different kinds of food, one delivery charge from one location. And you could get maybe the same burger that you would get from, you know, let's say five guys. You would get the same Thai food from uh, Slanted Door. Um, 
whatever. You know, you could get chain food, but from a different a different location if if that's how you wanted to go about doing it. And we've had something similar to this, at least in San Francisco, um, and but they've called it pop-up kitchens. So for instance, you might have a Chinese restaurant that's only open for dinner. Well, they've already paid rent. They've already got the space. So you'd see a maybe a breakfast place come in for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and they do breakfast, maybe breakfast and lunch, you know, chicken and waffles, or you would get a, let's say, um, a Thai restaurant that would maybe serve lunch, but would turn into a boutique burger place maybe at night for dinner. Um, so you've seen that quite a bit in San Francisco and because it, it's very trendy and it's limited on the days where they serve food. So you kind of have to be in the know and it's very sort of techie centric um, because you know you find out about it online or through the grapevine, word of mouth and um, you know, along the sort of foodie, uh, the foodie sort of underground, if, if you will. So um, very interesting what Travis is doing. I actually first heard about this through um, Gary V mentioned this in passing and he's friends with Travis. And uh, I think he might've come up with the idea and you know, Travis kind of glommed onto it. I'm not sure, but I know Gary V has, uh, I've heard him mention it, but kind of not as a subject, just kind of in passing, I was watching about some other subject and I was like, oh, wait a minute. I think I heard something about this. So it's an idea that's been kicking around for a while and these kitchens are popping up all over in India, England. So it's, it's becoming a thing, could be very global because no matter what happens with the economy, people still have to eat. So um, wanted to get that video out there um, be interesting to see what you guys think, how you feel about it, but, um, you know, leave a comment, let me know and, uh, check out the Facebook group and I'll see you next video. Be safe, be kind, take care.